Hello and welcome to episode number, I believe I've just looked this up and I've already forgotten. 322, I believe, of the TW2828 Island run. This is going to be Monday Night Raw for week one of January 2023. The first Raw of the new year. And we ended last year, of course, on a bang. <laughs> Ludwig, Kaiser and Chad Gable defeated Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. Um, the first main event of the new year will be another tag team match. Um, Drew McIntyre teaming with Bianca Belair against Rhea Ripley and Ludwig Kaiser ahead of this Sunday's new, new Year's Resolution pay-per-view. And without any more further ado, let's kick off the show and the year in style. <laughs> we kick off just, I imagine, new new theme song new pyro, shit like that, a new era of Raw for a new year, and we started off with the, what I'm calling the New Year's Jingle, just a three minute J-Flow performance, we're bringing in the new year in style, the way only they know how, and gets 72, apparently this advanced the Smackdown Women's storyline, okay, <laughs> but then of course, like we said last week, the first match of 2023, Cold Steel Cage. Cody Rhodes and Karrion Cross, the cold steel cage makes its way down and the first re- first theme we hear, the first entrance we see of the new year, wrestling has more than one royal family. For an 88, Cody and Karrion Cross have pretty good chemistry and it lifted the match, you're goddamn right they do. But yes, of course, <laughs> Cody Rhodes defeated Karrion Cross in a cold steel cage match, first match of the year, gets an 88, 15-32, with the beautiful disaster. Um, 86 for Cody. 81 for Carrion. You know. <laughs> and Cody who I checked. Because I didn't check the Power 500 on the actual video. Um, he was number 4 in the Power 500. He was my second best wrestler. It went Seth was number 1. Then Will Ospreay. Then Dragon Lee. Then Cody. So. If he wants to become wrestler of the year this year. Then. He's off to a great start. And as is Carrion Cross by the way. But yes, Cody wins the first match of the new year. We then cut backstage, where Kathy Kelly's interviewing both the World Heavyweight Champion Drew McIntyre and the number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship, Bianca Belair. And yeah, she's going over the, why I said a minute ago, the main event tonight, the first main event of the new year will be the mixed tag team match between the champion and challenger against champion and challenger, Drew and Bianca teaming up against Ludwig and Rhea. And Drew's talking about how, you know, he managed to get his world title back in 2022 and what a great year that was for him. But 2023 could be even better and that's going to start off at New Year's Revolution when he and Bian- uh, when he defeats Ludwig to retain the world championship. But of course, in the main event of that show, it won't be him. It will be Bria Ripley and Bianca Belair, tables, ladders and chairs. And he says that his girl here is going to get her title back. And Bianca's like, yeah, bitch. That title avoided me for most of the year. I had a hell of it for a few months in there in the summer. But I'm back and I'm not going to let it go. And I'm going to whoop Rhea's ass both tonight and at New Year's Revolution. Because I'm the B-E-E-S-T. <laughs> we then cut to... <laughs> I imagine... Um, we cut to Alexa's office. And we see like a sort of... Bru- still still wounded like bruised Tate and Paxley. Looking sad. And then it pans across and we see a concerned Ivy sort of looking at Tatum. And then we pan across again and Alexa's there, a shitty and grin, and she goes, Man, you really couldn't cut it against Rhea, huh? And she goes, I mean, I like to think I gave it a, a go. Like, I put up a better fight than I thought I was gonna. And Alexa's like, you know, yeah, it was good to see. But now maybe you've learned your lesson, you know, is that your role is not to be the hero around here. Your role is to sit here and watch my back because there's a lot of people out for me, okay? And then we hear the melodious voice of Aiden English walking in. He goes, ladies, 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 I do not mean to interrupt. I just think it's great timing. The new year has ticked over. We are in the year 2023. And coming up at the end of the month, we have the Women's Royal Rumble match. And that seems like the perfect opportunity for me and my girls to make a statement here in the new year. So what I'm saying is that 
Diana Perrazzo and Chelsea Green. They want in that match. And let's say as well. You know, you see there's a there's like a there's a hierarchy here, you see, like Chelsea and Diana haven't really done a lot to, you know, on merit just be able to get handed a spot in the match. They're probably gonna have to earn that spot. And there's there were a lot of people demanding spots in this in this rumble. And then they walk Tegan and Kylie Ray and I'm like, Well, we'd like to be in the rumble, Alexa, please. And <laughs> Alexa's like, Brilliant, perfect. So here's what's gonna do. Tonight Diana Perrazzo will take on Tegan Knox. The winner of that match earns a spot in the 2023 Royal Rumble. Next week, Kylie Ray will face Chelsea Green. The winner of that match gets a spot in the 2023 Women's Royal Rumble. That's two weeks worth of matches out of one pair. So you two, get your gear on, because you've got a match tonight. So like I said, I guess laying down the law there. Tegan and Diana tonight, Chelsea and Kylie next week. Winners both qualify for the Women's Rumble. 84! I knew this would be good, but 84 exceeded my expectations. I was expecting like 78-ish. It is the tag team match. Death from above, Sensei Dorado and Grand Metal League against Legado de las Sombras, Cruz del Toro and Joaquin Wild. And it is Death from above who pick up the win yet again, with Metal League pinning Cruz with the Metal League driver in 1238. I set them to steal the show, and goddamn did they try, but that cold steel cage, there's no top in that, I'm afraid. 81 for Lince, 84 for Metalik, 66 for Joaquin, and a 75 for Cruz. And yeah, that's now heading towards this Sunday, where we'll see the trio of Death From Above, these two, and Pistolero, against this trio of Joaquin, Cruz, and Andrade. We then got backstage... And the grand jury are just being douches. You know, like, oh, it's a great time. You know, tonight, my girls, other than my bae Scarlet, of course, she's going to be out there supporting the other girls. They're going to earn themselves a tag team championship match at the pay-per-view this Sunday. I'm in the Rumble. You know, it's, it's all great, you know. Hey, look at these guys just chilling. And it's the Balor Club. And Finn's like, what do you want, Dolph? And he goes, you're kind of lost here, other the man, aren't you guys? Like, you thought you could handle... William Regal and his boys, you couldn't. And now AJ's over on SmackDown, you don't even get to hang with him anymore. And he's in the Rumble, Finn, and you're not. So, like, tough luck, buddy. I think as well, actually, I, 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 I'm, I'm not in the Rumble yet. I could earn my spot in the Rumble right now. Tonight, in fact. And Dolph goes, Oh, sorry, kid, I'm already in. So, like, there's no point in me fighting you for a spot in the Rumble. And then Priest walks up to Finn. He goes, I'm not. How about me and you tonight? Winner goes to the Rumble. And Finn goes, brilliant, you're on. So Finn Balor and Damian Priest, one-on-one -on -one later on tonight for a Rumble. I know, I know, people moan about this in real life. Because they literally just announced a Rumble qualifying match on next week's SmackDown. With Ricochet and Top Dollar, when Kofi's already in the Rumble without qualifying it. And I agree that like it's it's weird that some people can just say they're in the Rumble while others have to qualify, but I just think that the qualifying matches can, like, that gives you stake for TV matches. So, like, that's just an easy stake to just stick on a couple of TV matches. It, it, it is inconsistent, but, like, I don't really mind that much because some people, you want to just let it be known, they're in the Rumble without them wrestling. Like, people always moan, oh, they've announced, like, 20 people for the Rumble. That's silly. I disagree, kind of. I think that there should be people... Obviously, you shouldn't announce surprise entrance. And there should still even be some people that are just on the roster that you don't announce. But announcing, like, your top names, just announcing them in the Rumble and then having people qualify, I think that's fine. So I'm, I'm acknowledging that that is inconsistent, but I'm okay with it. So Balor and Priest for a Rumble qualifier later on tonight. <laughs> we then get... Like the Rock and Stone Cold going face to face at WrestleMania three times. This is the face off of the next generation. We cut to the anime boys, and I imagine Saray is trying to like train Billy. Shank Dio is trying to train Shanky. Manny is trying to train R Truth. That one sounds like the peak of comedy, but I haven't got any specific bits written out for it, so yeah, just use your imagination. Then we pan off, and watching from afar is Titus and Sensei. And he goes, You know, 
I was hesitant to come here, but any enemy of Joe Gacy and that crew is a friend of mine. And since they turn so tight as he goes, you know, it's, it's great to have you on board, Titus. I mean, you're, you guys may not be the, the strongest, you may not be the best at anything, but hey, neither are we. We're all just a group of outcasts, really. And another thing, did you, or do you happen to know anybody that sent us a weapon? And Titus goes, well, you mean, do you mean Shanky? He, he's a big weapon. And since it's like, no, no, I mean a literal weapon. He got one at Christmas, and it, it was, it didn't say someone's name, it didn't say anyone's name on it. Oh, the he part's like, oh, that's weird. Well, I don't think any of us sent that. Huh. And since he goes, well, we'll keep it in the back for, like, if we need it, but maybe if we train enough, just us eight. Uh, eight on four, that seems like good odds. <laughs> so... Since in tight, it's just having a nice chat here. <laughs> we then cut backstage to Kathy Kelly interviewing Chad Gable. And she goes, my guest at this time is Chad Gable. Now, Chad, you know, you consider yourself a master strategist here on Raw. And you managed to get pick up a couple of wins in those five major open challenges you were doing. But Sheamus, quite frankly, has given you a tough time over the last few weeks. What are your plans going into sheesh? Sheesh, Kathy, okay. First of all, that's slander. Seamus has given me no such thing, okay. Thank you. I let Seamus pass that five-minute open challenge because, Kathy Kelly, here's where my master IQ that you wouldn't be able to think of comes into play because me and Seamus, we have this match at New Year's Revolution, okay? And I talked to Bliss, and guess what? That match is a Rumble qualifying match. Uh, thank you. So now, when I put Big Shamey down, one, two, three on the mat, or I make him submit, he ain't going to the rumble, but guess who is, Kathy? Master Gable. And once again, you're in awe at my pure genius. Now thank you, and let me go, because I've got a match to prepare for this Sunday. And then Gable walks off, and then we stick, we stick on Kathy. And he's like, well, there you have it, Chad Gable and Sheamus, this Sunday. Royal Rumble, and then she sort of like slows down talking as she hears a commotion storming towards her. She goes, Give me that microphone. <sighs> Listen here, Kathy. You're not even cool enough to have your name begin with a K, okay? This is a joke. This is not the year, the start of the year that I was supposed to have, okay? That punk ass Cody is supposed to get his ass beat inside my cold steel cage. But no, it's not to be. So Cody fixes his done. No way. I hear that. A couple of months ago, Cody said he was going to be in the Royal Rumble. But guess what, Kathy? I am too. And I'm going to eliminate Cody from that match, crush his dreams, and then maybe crush the throats of the 28 other men who dare stand in my way. 30 men in one ring. That sounds like a dream for my crusade of genocide. Nothing personal, anybody that enters the Rumble. And then... The Karen Cross got slow off, we just say on Kathy, and she's like, I mean, m- m- my last name begins with a K, so screw you, Karen. <laughs> but yes, obviously, 30 men in one ring, that is peak genocide numbers. So, of course, who better to be in that match than Karen Cross? Oh my goodness. Tegan and Deonna Perazzo get an 80 rated match. And speaking of the Rumble, Tegan Knox has punched her ticket to the Royal Rumble. She defeats Deonna Perazzo in 928 with the Vulture Culture Destroyer, 79 for Tegan, 66 for Deonna, and an 80 for the match. I don't understand why that was so good, but I'm not going to sit here and complain. <laughs> so Tegan joins Florence, Liv Morgan, Hikaru Shida, Utami Hayashishta, Mandy Rose, Gigi Doan, and JC Jane in the Women's Royal Rumble field. We then see Bivens and his crew, and he goes, well, 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 isn't the cat out of the bag? What an end to 2022 that was, boys. Angelo Dawkins, new Intercarnell champion. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey, Bivens, you big, beautiful, bald bastard. How'd you get that one, huh? And let's be honest, it was oh, it was only half my genius and half Dawkins' as himself, because he saw... The giant Omas, he saw the powerhouse Veer Mahan, who's unloaded on every single person he's stepped into the ring with recently. 
and he saw opportunity for us to wipe out the competition. And now he's the NFL champion. He's got his celebration ceremony coming up next. And because we're gentlemen and a lady, we're not going to get involved because Angelo's business is his business. Okay, but he knows if he ever needs our help, he knows where to find me. He's got my number. Congrats, big man. Long may you reign. And then we do cut to the ring for Angelo Dawkins' Intercontinental Championship Celebration Ceremony. And he goes, Fem, I'm here to tell you, always make sure to bet on yourself. Because, quite frankly, I hate that I gotta be out here in front of you people. Because you people didn't believe in me. Your people looked at me and they said, Hey, look, there's the Street Prophets. There's Angelo Dawkins. He's the Janetti. You know, when's, when, when are they going solo? When's Tez? When's he getting his big break? When's Tez going to be WWE champion? When's Tez going to win the Royal Rumble? When Tez and Bianca going to be a power couple here in WWE? Nothing about me. Nobody cared about me. Okay. I, I hack had the chance. Tez got hurt last year. And I sniffed. I was this close to getting a hold of this championship. And I vowed that day that this wouldn't be my story. My story would be that I... Angelo Dawkins bet on myself and I became Intercontinental Champion. And look at where we are now. Tez, don't know where he's at, but here I am holding gold, singles gold. So all of you who said that he'd be the breakout star of our team, you all can kiss my ass. Because here I am, standing here, your Intercontinental Champion. Out comes John Morrison. And he goes, whoa, 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 uh, 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 are you done? Like, I was going to stand back there and I was going to wait for you to finish because you, you clearly had a lot you wanted to get off your chest. And, like, I I, I, pre I feel you. Like, for, I, I don't really, actually, no, I don't because when I was in tag teams, people always looked at Johnny Drip Drip and they went, oh, my God, look at the star. There's the star. There's the most moist sea superstar in WWE history. But I feel your frustrations, Dawkins, and I, 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 don't, I don't really appreciate the manner in which you went about it. And the fact that you're holding my championship right now, but... Congrats, you know, you, you bet on yourself, and here you stand, Intercontinental Champion. But... I don't know if Tez told you this when you were the Tag Team Champions, or if you've figured it out by yourself by now. Winning a title is just the start of things. Keeping a hold of the championship is a whole other story, big man. Okay? Because you got a big-ass target on your back right now. I'd know, because you targeted mine. Okay? So, before anyone, anyone else in the back takes aim at you in this championship, I want my rematch. Okay? And I want my rematch this, this Sunday at New Year's Revolution. And then Dawkins goes, well, that's fine for him, you know. I've been nothing if not a respectful champion after all this time I took to earn this title, but you know, fam, there's one little problem with that. And Morrison goes, well, I don't see a problem. What's the problem? He goes, the problem is, Joe Mo, come here. The problem is, you ain't going to be at New Year's Revolution. And the clocks him with a belt shot. And he starts attacking John Morrison when out rushes Mustafa Ali. And he fights off Angelo Dawkins. And he sends him, he sends him over the top of the clothesline, hits a big suicide dive. And wipes him out. Dawkins grabs the belt and like retreats up the ramp as Ali helps Jomo to his feet and he goes, I know fam, nah this ain't going down like this fam, this is going on, you want your shot Ali? You want to get involved in our business? Huh? Well I see you so this Sunday I'll take you both on for this triple threat match, what do you say to that? And Morrison goes um, no, and Ali goes, hell yeah <laughs> Triple, triple threat IC title match made official for the pay-per-view. Dawkins, Morrison, and Ali. What a new year is this with our, as our Intercontinental Championship picture. You know, stars, you mean to go on. This will be the WWE Championship picture come the end of the year. Don't quote me on that. Kathy is then backstage again. And she's interviewing the Raw Tag Team Champions and the officially crowned Tag team of 2022. Akira Tazara and Humberto Carrillo, part of the dragon. And they walk into frame and she goes, Boys, 
you know, what a year you've just had and the WWE Universe has voted and they voted you their tag team of 2022. And Hiboto goes, you know, given where we started the year, but where, where we were in our careers when we formed this tag team nearly three years ago at this point, God. It's amazing to think how far we've come. And we show no signs of slowing down. We appreciate the WWE Universe having our back and voting us the tag team of the year for 2022. And we're going to stick by that and hopefully become a two-time tag team of the year and we go on for a success in 2023. And then Regal walks in and he goes, My, my, you are sure confident of your abilities, aren't you? Now, don't get me wrong. You are one of the greatest premier tag teams here in WWE today. In fact, you may have gotten my vote for tag team of the year if I was, you know, voting on a poll, which ultimately means nothing at the end of the day. But I had to step in here. I heard you say that 2023 will continue to be your year. Well, that's not so much the case, is it, boys? Because you only have those championships for another six days until my boys, Pete and Dudley, rip them from your hands. At New Year's Revolution. Now last week you saw Pete here embarrass Tozawa in singles action. And my my what a match it was. But tonight Dudley's feeling fine and fighting and fresh. So you're standing there Humberto. How did you get your boots on in 2023? And face him one on one tonight. And Humberto goes I'll see him out there. Yeah we don't back down from a fight bitch. <laughs> so yeah we got Tozawa and Pete last week. So it's Dudley and Humberto this week. And finally, oh, unfortunately it damages his star quality, which I guess is a little bit of a eh, but we finally got a great gimmick for Tazawa after about three shit ones. So if they became tag team of the year when Tazawa had an awful gimmick, imagine what is going to happen now he's got a great one. 86 rated match here, okay, and of course the winner and the man going to the Royal Rumble. Is Finn Balor. He defeats Damian Priest in 10.39. Double knee gut buster apparently. 89 for Balor. 84 for Priest. Yeah just a good little match. Again like I was talking about. Just, just There's something on the line here. So it automatically becomes more important. So it gets an 86 and Finn wins. And he punches his ticket to the Rumble. And maybe next year for Damian Priest I guess. Because he's out. Another thing that I didn't say before I move on to this Joe Gacy segment here. Um, we have Royal Rumble qualifying matches and Rumble specifically when I've got a bloated roster like this. Um, I can't fit everybody in because when I write out a Rumble, I don't immediately just go, oh, I'm going to put like the 15 best guys in from Raw. It's always like who I put in to think would make the match the best, which is sometimes a variety of top guys, mid-carders and comedy guys. So like... If I have a qualifying match between two top... For example, Sheamus and Gable. Like, one of them will miss out. And I now have an, a good excuse to not put them in. Instead of just they just weren't in. Like, they lost the qualifier. So, like, they're not in. And, like, it gets you can get a couple of big TV main events out of it. It's just... You know? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's my rant over. Joe Gacy. Has caught wind of <laughs> Titus World Records and My Wrestling Academia. The mega powers of factions joining forces. My West, my wrestling world records, I guess. And Aziz and Gruber inform him, and he goes, "It appears that our friends may have formed an army." On one hand, I'm flattered that they do so because it means they see the threat that we are, and they know that just the four of them isn't enough to stop us. But on one hand, on the other hand, if they are recruiting new allies, perhaps we should also recruit new allies. And of course, we know that starts this Sunday when Lyra here beats that Nova Nebula and she joins our cause. That's a powerful ally to have on our side. But maybe that's not enough. Maybe we need more we fail to get those people that are now working with our little friends over there but there are plenty more people to choose from boys and girl this has turned from a battle into a war <laughs> we let's see dominic backstage 
He's bragging. He's got the cruiserweight belt. And he's bringing it to Raw. And he goes, this is what I mean, you know. This is why I told you all. I told you all. New face of cruiserweight wrestling. Going to get more eyes on this belt. I'm in the Rumble. Now I'm here on Raw. You know, getting all these eyes on this cruiserweight belt. In case you don't watch Velocity, you know. This is what cruiserweight wrestling is all about. This is the new face of cruiserweight wrestling. Anthony Nee said so. Okay. And then Wesley flies in. And he jumps Dominic. He starts beating him up. And he's like, well, you're only going to hold that belt for much longer, kid. Because I want my rematch. I want it at New Year's Revolution. So, yeah, just a quick segment to set up Dominic Mysterio and Wesley for the Cruiserweight title at New Year's Revolution. Which I believe completes the card once we find out who will face Bailey and Dakota later on tonight. Now, actually. <laughs> Not even later. Holy shit. 86. Um, I've just realised it's a new year as well. So, like, maybe some of the caps have reset? Question mark. I don't know if that's how it works. I seem to remember once hearing that, like, every year, like, the caps change up. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? But it is the newly dubbed Live for Battle because it's not a Liv Morgan tag team if they haven't got a stupid tag team name. There's a Live for something. And holy live live for holiness or holy sheeder and if I didn't work. And I was like, she likes battling. That name works fine. But Liv does pin Sonya with the Oblivion in thirteen forty to punch Liv and Sheeda's ticket to New Year's Revolution. Our newly formed best friends here defeat Julia and Sonya Deville. Eighty two, Julia carrying, and seventy three for both Liv and Sonya and a seventy seven for Sheeda. And yeah, 86 for the match overall, which kind of shocks me, because that's higher than all of those ratings put together. Well, not put together, but, you know, you know what I mean. But then out come Bailey and Cora and Dakota. And she's like, congratulations, girls, you know. You know, us sitting back on SmackDown, your friendship, watching your friendship bloom, it's it's so wholesome and so adorable. Like, I remember when Cora was like that with us, but then eventually we taught her, like, the ways to be successful here. But unfortunately, you two haven't learned that because you're, you're not going to be successful in taking these tag team titles from us at New Year's Revolution. Because I've got two belts and barely dodge straps in case you can't count. One, two. I'm going to retain against that damn Kyrie this Friday at the Battleground Special Smackdown show. And then it's going to be in the Royal Rumble. When? And then the Grand Jury girls walk past. And like I imagine Julia and Sonya get in their face specifically. And they're like, whoa, whoa, keep it moving, keep it moving. Our issue's not with you yet. We'll see you in the Rumble, okay? Our issue's with those two in the ring. So, what a month it's going to be for Damage Control and you two are merely the first victims of that. See you Sunday. And then as I turn to go leave, Liv grabs the mic and she's like, Oi! Hey! She's like, you really think you're a hot shot, huh? Why, do you think just because you got two titles that makes you the greatest here in this entire company? Look, I'm not saying I'm the greatest. I'm not saying she is the greatest. I'm not saying we're the greatest tag team. But there's one thing that we have that you don't have. And that's a desire and a passion and a burning spirit to win. Okay? And you, you may have cheated with your little girls there to win both those championships. But it's going to take more than that to stop us winning. And this little Bailey two belts run you're on. Two weeks is enough. Say goodbye. To one of your titles this Sunday. And Bailey's like, ooh, tough girl with big mean words. As Liv and Gita just like stare at him from the ring and they're on the ramp. Yeah, she and Liv, the tag team challenging for Bailey and Dakota's tag titles at the pay per view. But before then, we cut to Rhea's locker room. She's like getting her gear on, probably putting her jacket on specifically, like for the main event. When he walks Ludwig, and he goes, Pard do pardon my interruption. He goes, look, you don't need to say anything, okay? Just stand on the apron and watch me do my thing, okay? Because Bianca's mine, okay? And I don't care what you and what Drew get up to, as long as you just stand on the apron and just watch me do my thing, you can get the second victory over the world champion. 
and you can really take that momentum into this Sunday. Just remember to thank me. And then Rhea walks out, and Ludwig just stands there. He's just like, all right, okay. 85. Apparently there was a lack of psychology, but my God, what a show this has been in ring-wise so far. <laughs> but in the good old singles match between tag team competitors going 50-50 that is so tried and true across every single booking I've ever done and ever seen done, Humberto Carrillo defeats Dudley Davis with a moonsault in 15 minutes, 4 seconds. 86 for Humberto, 89 for Dudley. And apparently there was a lack of psychology on display. The match changed as he drifted a little bit. But after the match, we get an all-out assault. You know, we get Gunter coming out. He lays into Zergis. Florence is out there. She beats up Zia Lee. And then Dudley and Pete beat up Akira Tazar and Humberto Carrillo. But then as the Viewer Coalition go to leave, Drew McIntyre's music hits and he makes his way out for the main event. He does his big entrance. He puts the sword in the ground. The pyro goes off. Then as he struts his way down to the ring, he and Gunter go face to face. And <laughs> Drew just sort of smiles at him. And Gunter just stares a hole through Drew. And Regal's like, come on, come on, let's go to the back, let's go to the back. And then as he tries to usher Drew away, or Gunnar away, him and Drew just stay locking eyes at each other as they both turn around. And Drew heads to the ring for the main event, which is, we'll get the graphic up next, the tag team match, and we got to a break. Because first, we've got to go over the newly announced matches for New Year's Revolution, including a women's tag team championship match featuring Bailey and Dakota Kai of Damage Control taking on Liv Morgan and Hikaru Shida, the newly dubbed team Live for Battle, in the first women's tag team title defense of the new year, I guess. We then also get. A triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship as the new champion Angelo Dawkins makes his first defense against both the former champion John Morrison and Mustafa Ali in a triple threat match. And then the Cruiserweight title will be getting pay-per-view premium live event spotlight when the Raw's Dominic Mysterio takes on the former champion of Heat of Velocity, Wesley in a championship rematch and New Year's Revolution. But, but that's that card finalized, but we do have an out here view this month, three weeks after that, the Royal Rumble. And we've learned of more entries into that match, including Finn Balor, who qualified for the match tonight, as well as Dominic Mysterio, who made his announcement to be in the match last Friday on Velocity, and Karrion Cross, who said he'd be there tonight. Then, of course, one of Chad Gable or Sheamus will also be in that match, depending on who wins this Sunday at New Year's Revolution. But then in the Women's Royal Rumble match, the field is starting to also take shape, as we learned five new entrants on tonight's show, those being Tegan Knox, Julia, Sonya Deville, Cora Jade, and Dakota Kai, with one of Kylie Ray or Chelsea Green set to qualify next week. The field for both the Rumble matches are taking shape, and of course... The Next Gen Cup Final is coming up on Heat just after this, where the winner of that will also be earning their spot to be in the Royal Rumble match. Fun times ahead. <laughs> 89 rated main event. Better than the Cold Steel Cage. But, yeah. Um, I haven't got anything specifically to say here other than I wanted... A spotlight with these two women in the match I wanted one of them to do something and I thought it made more sense for Bianca to slam Ludwig than Rhea to slam Drew so Bianca can slam or hit Ludwig with a KOD or something like that but in the end ultimately Rhea Ripley rams Bianca Belair's head against the exposed turnbuckle nails the riptide one two three and scores the victory for the heels, who get the momentum heading into New Year's Revolution. Another victory over McIntyre for Ludwig Kaiser. Ludwig gets an 89, an 86 for Rhea, an 91 for Drew, and an 89 for Bianca Belair. And the show ends, Rhea Ripley holding her title up high over a defeated Bianca Belair. Ludwig, you know, standing tall over Drew McIntyre. And will that be the scene in six nights at New Year's Revolution? We'll have to wait and find out. 90 rated Raw to kick off the new year. 
couldn't ask for well I could a 100 ratio I could have asked for but I'm not going to ask for much more than that but yes the rumbles are taking shape the pay-per-view is finalized we do have one more show in this episode though and that is the first heat of the new year where we will crown the next gen tournament winner will it be um Samantha Riggs or will it be Tracy Sharrow we'll have to wait and see heat kicks off with a random tag team match here um it's Amory and Kelsey who in the game are still named Double Trouble but I think Bad Habit is the new tag team name I'm going to go with for them and they beat just two of Raw's baby faces, Wendy Chu and Indy Hartwell Amory submits Wendy 63 for Kelsey, 65 for Amory, 66 for Indy and a 49 for Wendy yeah just a quick tag team match just to get them another win We then see the first of two backstage interviews. This one's Alicia Sanford with Tracy Sharrow, the head of the final. And she goes, what would winning this contract mean to you? And then she's like, Alicia, you see, you know, me and Samantha are more alike than I care to admit, you know. She calls herself your boyfriend's crush. I call myself Cupid's arrow. That's the same sort of thing. You know, love at first sight, that sort of stuff. But my love at first sight was... Heat and WWE and NXT and to be in the Royal Rumble after just a few months in this company it's it'd be a dream come true and like to, to be able to showcase my skills here on Heat the last few weeks but to do that in an even bigger scale on the Royal goddamn Rumble that would be something special and you know I'm going to show out on that show if I get there Alicia now that that's what it means to me 65, just a quick, another quick match. Yoko Uihara beats Blair Davenport for a cross-arm breaker. 66 for Yoko, 46 for Blair. And yeah, a nice win for her. Um, she's become sort of a regular on Heat recently because there hasn't really been much room for her on Raw. But it's fine. We then get Alicia, the other interview with Samantha Riggs. And she goes, Samantha, what would it mean to you? To win tonight's next gen cup and earn that royal rumble spot and that contract of heat and she goes like first of all like you like go and get me a, a better reporter like you like you're so ugly and like nah. anyway to me for me to win the next gen cup would prove what i've been told my whole life that i am special i'm the greatest okay tracy likes to say that she's you know cupid's arrow um, but i'm the real arrow you know Everybody loves me, and boys want to be with me. You girls, you want to be me. You want to be me, don't you, Alicia? And she's like, not really. Can't say I do. She goes, well, you will when I win this tournament and I get that contract and I get my spot in the Rumble. Mwah. Another random tag team match. <laughs> Kim McQueen and Zoe Stark, both from NXT, um, take on Mina and Tam, that J Flow contingent. Tam picks up the win in 13.46 of a spin kick. 73 for Tam, 66 for Mina, 40 for Zoe Stark, and a 38 for Kim McQueen. And then the main event is the finals of the Next Gen Cup. <laughs> 22 raid main event, they don't click. That's awesome. And <laughs> the show is going to get awful. It might, even, it might actually even be bad enough for me to lose pop, but I'm hoping the segment after this will save it. And the winner, the one who earns the contract with Heat and wins the ne Heat Next Gen Cup is Tracy Sharrow, who pins Samantha in 10 to 9 with an Olympic cutter. She gets a 31, a 23 for Samantha. Again, they don't seem to click, because of course they don't. Because why would anything on mine ever have positive chemistry? But then, after the match, out comes Stephanie and Triple H and Brandy to award her the cup, the her Heat contract. And I guess her spot in the Royal Rumble. And that's the end. The first heat of the new year. Gets a 42. And so ends the first episode of Challenge Run in 2023. Um, the next time we'll see the Raw crew will be at New Year's Revolution. Which is this Sunday. But before we get then. We should probably see what the Smackdown guys are up to. 
when they host their Battleground special episode of SmackDown, their first show of 2023. See you then.